everyone. I am in the lab, in your genetics lab, and I'm going to be performing the next experiment for you. Um, so this experiment is actually um, restriction fragment length polymorphism, which is a, a fairly common technique that's used in genetic labs to create very specific cuts in DNA. And it makes very specific cuts in DNA because we use this these um, things called restriction enzymes. And the restriction enzymes are special types of DNA uh, nucleases that are going to allow, um, sorry, <laughs> allow the enzyme to actually find a specific sequence in the DNA and cut that sequence. And so now I'm going to be showing you the technique that we would be doing if we were actually working in the lab. So um, I've got my little area set up here, and so I've got my camera on a tripod so I can show you my area. And so in my area I've got, let me find my angle, I have got um, my recipe, I have my tubes set up, I have my pipettes here, I have my tips, my trash bucket, very important. I have my marker and I have my, um, usually you would use an ice bucket, but here we're using um, an ice, a, a cold container, which is basically like a um, sort of just a frozen, like a, like a blue ice kind of thing that you would put in your freezer at home. But here we have um, some specific uh, restriction enzymes that need to stay cold. We have some BAMH1 here. Sorry, I didn't, that didn't show up. We have some Hindi 3 and we have some Eco R1. And so what I'm gonna be showing you today is how I would actually set up one of these um, reactions. So I wanna show you here, in my notebook, I've written out my formula for our, um, for what we're gonna be doing. And so what I have is we have our water, we have our buffer, we have our DNA, because we have to put DNA in there to cut it, and then we have our enzyme. Now we're using three different enzymes, so um, we're gonna in add the enzyme last because it's the one component that differs between all three tubes. And so um, I've calculated how much I'm going to need for a 15 microliter reaction. And the reason I chose 15 microliters is because that's a good enough volume that we can load it on a gel and, and actually see it. And so because it's a 15 microliter volume, our 10X buffer, which is a one to 10 uh, uh, concentrated solution, needs to be 10% of the total. So I've set that at 1.5 microliters. Now for the DNA, the DNA is at a concentration of one microgram per milliliter, which tells us that it's pretty concentrated, so we don't need that much. So I'm gonna put in, again, a 10th of the total volume, which is at 1.5 microliters. We only need one microliter of the enzyme because these enzymes are super strong, super concentrated, and so we don't actually need that much. So what we do to figure out how much water we need to fill up and to dilute the buffer and, and all the other stuff is we add up what this is, subtract from 15, and so that leaves us with 11 remaining. So one and a half plus one and a half is three, plus one more is four. So to get to 15, we need 11 microliters of water. Now, because I'm doing multiple tubes at the same time, I'm going to create something called a cocktail. And so for cocktail, I'm going to make four different tubes of this minus the enzyme. And so to account for pipetting errors, I actually calculate four and a half times to make sure I have enough left over when I'm actually uh, divvying it up amongst the tubes. Because sometimes you make uh, pipetting errors and that's okay, that happens. So we wanna um, kind of uh, take care of that problem before it, before it happens. So if we multiply the 11 times the four and a half, we get 50 uh, and a half microliters. Uh, one and a half times four and a half gives us 6.7, 6.7 for the DNA. We total that all up and we get 64 microliters. Now we know that all of this without the enzyme is 14 microliters. So all we have to do is go into this take out 14 microliters from each for each tube, uh, put it into each tube, and then to each tube we add the separate enzyme. Now one of these tubes is going to be our negative control, so we'll just add some water instead of enzyme. But that's how we're going to be doing 
this experiment today to um, do our restriction fragment length polymorphisms. Now, as with any kind of uh, science experiment, the first thing you have to do is label your tubes. And so what I'm gonna do on the big tube, which is where I'm gonna be making my cocktail, my master mix, I'm just gonna write MM for master mix, or you can write mix, or you can write whatever you know is going to be, uh, that's going to be. And then on each one of the tubes, I'm going to write, uh, somehow I'm gonna label them, I'm gonna just write one through four on these. So one, two, three, and four, and then I can, when I go back to my, um, when I actually run those on a gel, I'll be able to know which one is which. Now, I need to write down in my notebook what I have assigned to one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna say that one is our BAMH1, so I'm, gonna, I'm writing that down in my notebook, which you can't see. Number two will be our HENDI3, and again, these are our restriction enzymes that are going to cut our DNA in a predictable pattern. Number three is our ECOR1, and then number four will be our negative control, and that's gonna be just water. Now I'm putting the lid back on because it keeps it cold, it keeps everything nice and cold inside, because if you let the enzymes get warm, they won't work anymore. Okay. So now we are ready to make our master mix. Now, we know that we're gonna to have to add certain amounts of these different uh, components. We have our uh, water tube. We have our DNA tube. It's a little bit hard to read. It says one microgram per mil DNA. And this is just lambda DNA. And then we have our buffer. And our buffer is um, basically salts and the right pH and all that stuff. And I've mixed it up pretty well. You can kind of see the bubbles in there. But I've mixed it really well so that um, that's uh, good to go. All right. So for our first measurement for our water, um, I'm going to actually put the water in last to help dilute it out a little bit better. So I'm going to start with the DNA. And the DNA I'm going to start with so we don't contaminate it first thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my DNA tube, I'm gonna take my pipette, and I need to measure out 6.75 microliters. Now this pipette is actually set at 7.6 right now. So hopefully you can see those uh, numbers in there in that window that say 7.6. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that. Now we're not gonna be able to get to 6.75 on this pipetter, so I'm just gonna set it to 6.8. We could do 6.7, we could do 6.8. We'll do 6.7 on the other one to make sure that we have the right volume. Now, this has a small tip, which means it goes with the small tips. So when we add the tip to it, this tip can hold up to 10 microliters of liquid. So what we're gonna do is take our DNA and we're gonna take our pipetter, and our pipetter has two stops. It goes soft to the first one, and then it has a harder stop where you have to press harder to get to. We're gonna to go to that first stop. We're going to insert the, the tip into the liquid just below the surface, and we're gonna slowly draw it up. And I know you didn't get to see me doing that whole thing there, but we slowly draw, drew that up into the, t into the pipette tip, and we're done with the DNA, so I put it at the back of my rack. And then I take my clean tube for the master mix, and I put that little bit of liquid in there. Now, we didn't pipette a lot of liquid, so it's actually kind of hard to see it. It's just this little tiny dot down at the bottom of the tube. So I'm gonna get rid of my tip. That was dirty now. And so now we have just a little tiny bit in the bottom of our tube. Now for the uh, buffer, we're gonna measure the same amount. So we're gonna get a clean tip this time. Same thing, same measurement. We're gonna do the same procedure where we open up the tube and we're careful not to touch the inside of the tube. We are going to carefully draw out the liquid, slowly draw it up, and you can kinda see in the tip, there's just a little tiny bit in there close up that tube because we don't want it to get contaminated because so we can use it again later 
open up your tube and you're going to insert the, the tip in and carefully eject it at the bottom of the tube. Now at this point, you have two things in there that are mixed, so you can use your little pipette tip to kind of give it a swirl and mix it a little bit. Just make sure that you've blown it out, meaning you've gone all the way to the second stop on that pipette tip to make sure all the liquid is gone. It's all gone from that tip, we we'll get rid of the tip. All right, so our max master mix has two of the components in it. Next, we need to add the water. Well, the water we need 50, and if you notice, this um, pipetter doesn't go to 50, it only goes to 10. So we need to go up in size to the next pipetter. And this range is from 10 to 100, so it should accommodate our measurement of 50. So we're gonna take our tips that fit this pipetter. We're gonna put a new tip on. I forgot we were supposed to, oh, it was already set at 50.5. Look at that, I didn't even do that. So we're gonna take the water, we're going to put our pipette tip into the water, slowly draw it up, pull it out, put your water in the back of your rack because you're done with it, open up your tube, your master mix tube, add the water in. Now at this point, you can actually pipette up and down to mix it a little bit better. And that helps a little bit. Now some people like to kind of flick it around and mix it with their finger. You can do that too. Sorry, I don't think you can see that. You can kind of do that to help mix it a little bit. But you see it's a little bit bubbly. You wanna make sure you don't get it too bubbly or else you won't be able to measure it. Now, the next part of the protocol is to add exactly 14 microliters to each one of our sample tubes from our master mix. So we're gonna add the master mix in, and then we're gonna add the enzyme. Now, we have to use this pipetter because it's, it, it's in the range of 14 microliters. This other one doesn't go up that high. I actually do have one that goes up to 20, but for some reason, um, someone has borrowed them, and then because of the pandemic, was not able to return them back to where they belong. So. I have it adjusted at 14, and so I'm going to get a clean pipette tip. And the reason that you get a clean pipette tip each time is because it measures the volume a little bit better than if you use a dirty tip. And you, you'll kind of see that as you, if you start to reuse tips, you'll see that it doesn't quite measure perfectly the next time you use it. So you're gonna very carefully release the contents at the bottom of the tube so that it's just down at the bottom and you can kind of see that's what 14 microliters actually looks like. So we're gonna do this for all four of the sample tubes. And the reason I'm changing my tips, again, is because of volume. We wanna make sure the volume is correct. Oops, I got some bubbles in that one. That's okay though, because you know, bubbles are okay. I mean, they're not desirable. You wouldn't want to intentionally blow bubbles, but you can do that. And notice that I'm actually doing the negative control last. Does anybody know why I'm doing the negative control last? And I know you can't answer me because this is a video. The reason I do the negative control last is because I'm making sure that I have not contaminated this master mix at any part of the, um, the, the manipulation of that master mix. So we wanna make sure at the end of the experiment that we have actually done what we're supposed to do. So we put that in there. All right, so now all of my samples have their master mix in them. And now I'm going to need to put my enzymes in them. So I'm going to get my uh, small pipette ready, and this is the 0 0.5 to 1, uh, sorry, to 10 microliter pipette, and I'm going to set it at 1 microliter. And so we're going to add different enzymes to each one of the tubes and then water to the negative control. So I need to get a fresh tip because I'm going into my enzyme stores. Now it's very important that you keep these nice and uh, clean 
and that you don't contaminate them because this tube right here, the liquid in this tube cost me about $200. So these are very expensive. They are purified enzymes that you get from bacterial cells, certain bacterial species, and they're not that easy to make. So they're very expensive to buy. Now, when we measure one microliter, one microliter is not much. It's a very small amount. And so it's important to know where your, your pipette tip is because that's where the small amount of liquid is going. So I always release mine below the surface of the liquid that's in the tube. And then I use the pipette tip to kind of stir it in. Okay, So that way everything stays at the bottom of the tube. All right, so I have added the first enzyme to the first tube and this one is ready to go. So I'm gonna set that right here until they're all ready. So now I'm just gonna do the Hendy 3. Give me some enzyme, it's not much. And notice I'm moving the tubes over as I'm working with them so that I know visually which ones I've already used. And that's just, it's just a trick that you learn in the lab to help you keep your place. So I've got two ready to go. the third enzyme. See, I already almost lost my place. We're gonna stir that one in. Right. Oops, I missed with my trash bucket. And then, oh, that's a bent tip. And then the last one is water. The reason we do water last, like I said already, is because we wanna make sure that nothing in the experiment got contaminated. Now contamination can come from anywhere. Contamination can come from touching your glove with the tip of the pipette tip. It can come from touching it anywhere. It actually can come from inside the pipetter because you're just blowing air through the tip. So sometimes people will use um, what we call plugged tips. It has a little cotton ball inside so that you can't get aerosols through. Um, it can come from, uh, it could be mixed into one of these. It could have been inside the tube. It could have been outside the tube on the lid, etc. Could have come from any one of these components that we added in. So we're just testing to make sure that nothing that we didn't intention or we didn't accidentally add in any uh, contamination into our experiment. All right. So these are ready to go into the water bath. I'm going to put these tubes in the water bath at 37 degrees, and they have to sit there for about half an hour before we can actually um, uh, before the the digestion is done. It takes about half an hour. And once we have that done, we'll be able to set up our gel for running it um, as, uh, while, while the samples are uh, churning and uh, baking in the water.